grilled her. Hey guys, welcome back to The Way I Do It. This is part two of feather backing a wood bow. I'm gonna pause here to mention that if you have not seen part one, now is the time to watch that for any of this video to make sense. So I'm gonna drop a link in the description below uh, so you can go back and watch that video first. And I have here in my hand the finished bow, uh, but what I don't have is all of the video leading up to this point. And the reason is because as I was processing and editing the video, this fancy little hard drive completely quit on me. I was ready to click upload and it completely quit. I have tried everything I could all the way to researching how to extract your data from a hard drive and pulling this thing apart uh, all to no avail. So I've lost some of the video. I haven't lost all of it though. I'm going to recreate some of the video to show you the processes that are important. I know a big part of what this video was going to be was fixing the damage I did to the feathers on the previous video. And uh, just to tell you in short, I had to rip those feathers off. I was able to keep a lot of them together and place them back on the bow in a way uh, where they still looked good. And then I cut new feathers and laid those on top. Um, this video is going to show you the trimming of the feathers. It's going to show you the final polish work. And then I'll give you some close-ups of what the finished product looks like. Okay guys, so in this portion, since I lost the video of me trimming the feathers on the back of the bow, I went ahead and recreated the scenario. And so I glued some feathers down to a board, and this is similar but not exactly the same. Remember I used flex coat for putting the feathers on the bow. This is Gorilla Glue. I'm just trying to get them glued down so that I can demonstrate how I trimmed the feathers along the edge of the back so stay tuned here and you'll see how that works okay so this is just to demonstrate how to trim up the feathers off the edge of the bow if you recall from the first video, the feathers were overhanging the side of the bow quite a bit, just like these are right here. And this glue is not quite dry, uh, but for demonstration purposes, it should work just fine. And I'm going to show you the best way that I've found to trim these feathers. I'm going to come in here with a knife, and it helps to have an extremely sharp knife. And then you can just follow the edge of the wood like that. Just let the wood guide the blade. And just very slowly trim that edge and those feathers will just zip right off. You can see that glue is a little sticky still, um, but it's still coming off really clean. When you're doing this on your bow, I recommend letting it cure completely. So after you've set the feathers, let it cure at least overnight so that the flex coat is extremely hard and set so that there will be no risk of tearing or uh, pulling any feathers loose off of here. So there it is. You can see I was able to make a pretty clean edge out of those feathers just with that sharp knife and the more you let that dry or the more you let your flex coat cure the better off you're going to be the cleaner of an edge you're going to get uh, but it's that simple and that's how i got the entire edge of the bow to come out really clean and straight looking so the rest of this video that you're about to see is video that was not lost it's time to put the final coat on and to put the final coat it won't take nearly as much of this stuff as it does to set the feathers 
when you're setting the feathers, quite a bit of it absorbs into the feathers and into the wood, I think. When you're putting the final coat on, it's just a thin layer that lays on top of what you've already done. I got my flex coat epoxy all ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and start applying. Just remember, you're not applying this to the wood, so you really don't need to apply it any further than the feathers go up the limb. You can see once that goes on, it really brings the color out. And I said this before, but this epoxy is really thin and it will run off your bow. So you, so you kind of have to go fast on this. You don't go too fast, but you don't want to neglect the parts you've already done because it will start to run off the sides. This is a self-leveling epoxy. Once you get done applying this to the back of the bow, you will have to rotate your bow about every 10 minutes. So just make sure you get really good coverage on all these areas. You're really going to see the colors come to life out of these feathers as you put this stuff on here. It's really incredible. When you're putting the stuff on, you got to find the balance of putting too much on and not enough on. What I mean is, if you put too much on, a lot of it's just going to run right off the bow. But if you don't put enough on here, you seem to get these little pits where, the, where you don't get coverage. I've got a little bit of epoxy left. I'm going to use that to make sure I've got every little spot covered. There may be a few places that didn't quite get coverage. And I'm going to get all these edges and corners done. And then pretty soon it will be time to start rotating this bow. You'll have to find a way to rotate it without touching the surface that you've applied the stuff to. If it's dripping down the sides, just kind of collect them with your brush and put them back on top. It helps to stand where you can see a reflection of light that will uh, indicate where you need to add some or maybe it's dripping off. So if you get a light behind you in just the right way, it really helps you see where you need to do some more work. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna rotate it now for the first time. I typically just use a combination of my vise and whatever other objects I have around to get this thing set up like I need it to. So I'm going to set the tip of the bow in the bias, making sure the feathers aren't touching. So anything I've just worked on is not touching. And then I'm just going to stack some stuff up here to make it fit. So you want it to be somewhat level. That's not going to do it. 
That's going to start the clock, and then five to ten minutes, I'm going to flip that again. So it's been six minutes with this thing upside down, and you can see it's starting to pull up like it's going to drip off the, the back there. So it's definitely time to rotate this bow again. process about an hour or so. You can leave it a little bit longer. You don't have to flip it every 10 minutes. Every 15, 20 minutes you probably should be fine. It's been right at two hours. And this stuff is starting to set up pretty good. It's very sticky and very tacky still. So you do not want to touch that surface. You don't want to get dust on it. Uh, you don't want to get fingerprints on it. You want it to stay like it is until it's completely cured. So what I'm going to do is just let this thing sit overnight. I'm not even going to touch it again until tomorrow. So here's the finished product. And you can see that coating really made these feathers shine really good. And uh, I just wanted to demonstrate, though, when you're laying feathers, you want to lay them, again, lay them from the tip down to the center. And then from the other end, you want to go from this end and layer them towards the center. And when you get done, you will have a gap here. And I took video that showed this, and it was lost. Uh, but what I do then is I'll take a feather, and I will just lay it this way across the gap. I'll take a second feather and lay it this way. And you can see the pointy end here. The broad end is up here. And that will sufficiently cover that. I'm going to leave this bow like it is. Uh, all of my other bows, I've actually put... A leather wrap on that handle and that will cover up you know these these ends and edges that don't look quite as good as the rest of the feathers do and I can show you that here so here's one that I did this spring and you can see the, the feathers come in the same way and then I've got that wrap that conceals where they join together Here's one I did, I think, last year. This is the bow I took a deer with. And same thing. Here's another bow I made this spring. 
This is that sinew backed shorty turkey bow. And I actually wrapped it with the leg skin off of one of my spring turkeys as well as put that spur on there. So that's just an example of ways that you can do the handles. On this one, I've got the walnut handle. I want to make sure that stays uh, out where it can be seen. So I'm not too worried about the feathers right there on the front or on the back. Here's a short clip of this bow in action. As you can see, this bow is not only good to look at, it also functions and shoots normally. So I hope this video has been helpful for you, for somebody out there. And if you guys have questions, please don't hesitate to leave comments and I'll try to answer those as best as I can. I also plan to do another video on feather backing here in the future. Uh, hopefully one that I don't lose the footage of and I can make it a little bit better and show you guys a little bit more. So stay tuned for more videos. Thank you.